Aloha golfers! Welcome to Golf in the Cosmos, episode number nine. I'm Kevin Robalski, and here we talk all things in Mac O'Grady and Morad. So today I'm sharing with you part two of last week's video, 1987, Mac O'Grady working with Dave Stockton, Mark File, PGA West, Palm Springs, California, and they're joined by Dave's son, Ron, at the end. So this video will start off with Dave and Mark and Mac swinging in sync on a count from four different camera angles. And I think Mac is very unique in originating this idea, at least with video. I think Mac is the first person to do this, at least for instructional purposes, having the side-by-side -side swings on a count in sync for comparison and of course Mac being the reference so I think this may have existed in photographs uh, in some book form but at least in video I think Mac is the one that started this and of course in modern times now we can use our computer software and do this very very easily so um, but Mac I think started it so here also in this video, we have a little bit of insight in what Mac does or what Mac looks at when he's first diagnosing a swing. And so from this angle, the front angle, he's looking at the lower body, the bottom six joints, the hips, the knees, and the feet, and what they're doing. So specifically, he does not want to see the left knee kick in too much, the right hip slide, the left foot come up, nor the right knee go out. And so this generation coming from the 1970s into the 80s, the 70s style of swinging had a lot of knee action. So you saw a lot of knee slide, a lot of hip slide. You saw the upright swings sliding and then back to the reverse seat. And so Mac is very much part of a shift in teaching to a more centered rotational swing. And so Mac is definitely promoting these ideas in the MORAD project. So Mac is advocating centeredness, turning on a perfect circle, shoulders turning in the middle of the feet, balance, easy on the brain to repeat. So these, these are the, some of the basic principles. From this view down the line, Mac is looking at when he's diagnosing a swing where the left arm is in relationship to the shoulder line, right? Is it right across the shoulder line or in this area more commonly above it, right? So again, from the 70s, the upright swing was in, was in, was the trend. And Mac talks about how Jack Nicholas, Greg Norman, and Davis Love are too upright and again, need the sliding in the swing to correct it mid-course. So he also, from this view, is looking at the right knee. So specifically, he's looking at two things. Where is the left arm in relationship to the shoulder line, the shoulder plane, and where the right knee is? Is, it, is the right knee braced or is it straightening? Right, so he does not want to see a gap between the knees from the down the line view. Right? He doesn't want to see this space right here. Of course, that changed in later Morad teaching. So, um, you know, that's one of the, the complications of sort of using the Morad method. Is what generation, what, what information are you using? Of course, the right knee has to move back somewhat if the hips are going to turn 45 degrees. So, this is, uh, you know, again, a case-by-case -case basis. How much does that right knee go back? And, or do you use a closed stance? You know, it depends on the person. You know, the tighter the body, you might have to, you might have to make those modifications. Now, if you look at Dave Stockton in these videos, Dave's body is very tight. And so, you know, he needs some stretching. He needs the yoga and Mac would advocate the book 28 Days to Yoga at this point, and you can see Dave's body doesn't really want to go into the positioning of this Morad model. And of course, um, 
you know, this generation didn't exercise and stretch like uh, modern times. So, you know, doing something like yoga or even just stretching would be a little bit of a novelty. But of course, Mac was all in. So Mac, uh, at this time, advocated the book 28 Days to Yoga. So if you follow this generation, uh, I, would, I would look at that book. And plus, I would look at two other books Mac advocated reading. One is Kabril Gibran's The Prophet, and the other being a book on, uh, called Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And these are more philosophical books, but again, it really shows the insight and the character that Mac and his philosophy sort of represents. And so these would be ideal books to get if you wanted to follow this system. You know, pretty much essential. You had to read these books if you were going to be part of the Morad program in the 80s. Okay, so that's a you know important point. Another interesting aspect of this video is Mac talks about the follow through and the left elbow, left arm being upright in the finish. So when you go to P9 in the follow through, the right arm, the right elbow is down and in, stays connected. So Mac was very much talking about the penny under the armpit. So the right elbow in the back swings down and in, in the follow through, stays right across the chest. But the left elbow comes up. So that keeps you in your tilt. And also makes the shaft finish ear to ear. All right, so talked about getting this right elbow, the left elbow up. And, um, and that's part of the, the P9 finish. So that's an interesting point that's kind of not well discussed in other videos. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. A lot of great information. Of course, the camera work is not great. The video quality is not great, but the information is great. And I look forward to sharing part three with you next week. A lot of more gems to come. So I wish you all good golfing. Back in the back in the day, it was so gross. No, I don't mind. Maybe just have a little more hang time or something. Okay, here we go. Again, out one, out two, out three. Out three. Out three. Out three. Out three. Well, he's smart. He doesn't put me in the back. Okay. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. Sit up longer, my sit up longer. Oh yeah, this is helping my uh, rhythm. Oh. I never had any rhythm. It me if Mike was laughing at me. It's because you can't dance, Dad. Dad, does this mean you can dance now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the price I got in the car, you know, we can do it. Put this on about an hour. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Okay. Oh, Section 10, Mac, you're not vertical. Your, your club's out here a little bit. <laughs> He's also false starting up on nine. Okay. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. I thought it looked like it went off the lower. Well, your left knee was better. No. I think the left section screwed up with South and South and Three. Yeah, that's the right one.
Why are you always the shortest, Dad? Mine stayed up longer, him he just kept his hands up. Ah, uh, I see. 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, 3. Okay. Can we get a picture from behind? Roger, roger. Sorry. Yeah, we did three. Sorry. Yeah, we did three. Everything is basic at first the lower body. If I, look, if I look at somebody, it's always what are those six joints at the bottom doing? Okay. So there's three left foot positions, and each foot position affects the range of motion of the, of the left knee. The left foot is position one, take the club back, go to the top, the hips, this to hit, that's tendency to slide. Here's your center of gravity. This moves like this, the left knee moves 18 inches, this will move. It. Where this left foot is affects the left knee, and the left knee will cause her right side to slide, and that goes to the top, and then shoulders off on his right leg, but you don't want to do that. Okay. Now the question is, this goes out 20 degrees, the left knee is, because the right hip's got, so this has got to turn, the left, this just rotates around the center, the left knee moves towards the ball. Okay. If this boss turns properly, and the left knee moves towards the ball. You don't want to have your left knee going this way, and then trying to turn it, okay? Yeah, right, okay. Position number three, if you have your left foot uh, 45, 50 degrees left, now you go ahead and turn your hips like this and the left knee moves towards the ball. Yeah. I mean, towards, towards the target line. Right. And that's where Hogan was a lot. Kind of take it back up here like this and the left knee did not move this direction. Now, there's patterns here. If you have your left foot 50 degrees like this, you don't want to have your left arm above your shoulder line. Because if it gets above your shoulder line, the that, that more the left foot is turned left, in the morning, when you want to snap, top, start yeah. Bob Murphy has got it 50 degrees left, left arm's way up on top. Yeah. Okay, he's, he's coming over the top every single time because there's no flexibility left in the, right. the knee. Got it? Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the guys, there's a pattern here. The guys whose left knee is always straight, the left foot is always straight, are the guys that have a tendency to always go real upright, like George Burns. Or Guy Bird. Oh, Guy Bird. Okay, I've always gone real upright. That way, the downswing is that. It, it allows the hips to slide, and it has to slide this way to allow the left arm to come back towards the body again, because it gets way up here. As the sliding it comes down here, then then they do their rotation and they come around with my such. Okay. So what the ideal is we're trying to do is have the left knee is left foot 20 degrees, so the range of motion of the left knee moves towards the ball, the ball. Okay. and you got to make sure in the back swing the right knee angle stays the same, so that the this basic uh, center of gravity, which is here across the feet. Stay centered and you just go to the top. If your, if your right leg straightens, the hip moves, the left knee moves to it. Which so I do. Kind of, yeah, okay. What? Which I do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you guys following that at all? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, another thing is if the left foot is straight, you can always look at the right knee, right hip, and it always goes out 99% of the time. Okay. If the left foot is straight, you always see the left knee moving here. Then it moves to this point, like Jerry Pate used to do, and come way across that. Okay, so the left knee has a movement of that much. Yeah. Come on. You got to try to rot rotate this around a fixed center. Keep the trunk. In the eyes, you start sliding this way, and you don't really kind of, maybe you got some little wedge shots around the green, you can maybe get away with it, but you're trying to control the radius of the club head. It's very difficult. Okay. So when we look at, go ahead. What we're doing is we're setting up the, the left foot at a certain position. So you watch the first thing, you look at the left foot, it's okay, and the left knee, see how much the left knee moves towards the ball, okay? Sections one through four. Okay. Again, quick. 
once before. Now the other thing is your, if left knee is moving there, you make sure you double check the right hip, see what the right hip is doing. Did it rotate? Okay. Is the right hip, did the angle, did it increase this way, which it did? Okay. Oops. Yours goes a little that way. My right hip? Yeah. Oops, let me check this out. Yeah, we got that on film to show you. Okay. So we checked the right hip. Now this one, do it again. Now you're gonna check the right uh, the right kneecap. See if the right knee is set up properly. Should that stay about where it's at? Okay. See if the right knee keeps the band. Yeah. Okay. So from sections one through four, the lower torso looked looked it's pretty good. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now to really find out, now you have to go one through four. He looked good going up. Now you have to go four through seven, seven okay. through eight. Okay. Now. The main thing to look here is left knee. What does the left knee do from six, six, seven, and eight? Okay. What that was better before he used to yeah. go. He okay. slide it. Yeah. Okay. As soon as he heard you talking about that, <laughs> yank shut. Okay. I'm so, dumb, but I'm not stupid. That's right. Okay. Why did you pull your left knee closed that quick? All right. So from this view, this is called the the frontal view. Yeah. Okay. From the frontal view. Most of the linemen look pretty good. One more thing you verify here, you go to the top of the swing, you check to double check, make sure his shoulder turns in the middle of the stance. Now this is what, what Keenan, myself, and Mark did uh, in diagnosing your movements. Make sure the shoulder turns right in the middle of the stance. Okay. All right, let's turn this off. We're gonna go from behind over here. Check left arm. Plane, arm across the shoulders. If you're here, you can, you can go right around the center. You do the same thing from up here. He's outside. He had it, goes, it would go out this far above it. Okay. All right. If you go too far and hit this low, you start to come in, you hit you know, behind, behind it. Yeah. Okay. So there is an ideal there. Okay. Yeah, See his left side. Like, he's like that much yep. too far that way. Now, let's have some fun here for a second. Uh, yeah, put this pen on your right arm. <laughs> Again. Well, watch the now, we can see your left knee from here, File. Don't chicken out on it just because we're back here at this angle. Don't worry about it. Okay. That, that stuff with Nick Lass is doing, going real upright for the kids. And you got to be real, you know how strong you got to be when you See, that's, so he was patterning himself after Davis Love. And after last week, I was just, I'm going, nice hey, guy, got though. a new theory. <laughs> got a new theory. We're changing the whole thing. Oh, man. You gotta be really strong, even even. Good, Mark. Uh, I have worked with Davis and his dad yeah. to try to get, get that thing down lower and lower and lower because he had a tendency to kind of get that way oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the guys that go that way, the hips. Are, that's one enormous problems. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing you check is the left arm to make sure it's, it's properly set up. Okay. Uh, and the other thing on the back swing, you wash the right knee to make sure the right knee is not straightened out. He's going, going through or going back? Still, going back? Going back Going back in there or going back I'll show you section nine. He's still through. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I got you. He's still got to be up a little bit more, okay? He still has too much of a sliding test. Maybe still maybe because of his left knee in section six through seven. So he's still sliding. So let's watch the right knee now, okay? So you check the left arm plane, then the right knee, the right knee looks pretty good, okay? And then the other thing, make sure he's got the second tilt of his shoulders. Point that a quarter of an inch from my left shoulder, and a quarter of an inch away, and watch. I've got to go, right there. Now the shoulders will go perfect circle. Let me do it one more time. Top, I go, okay? Everything breaks. This way, the shoulders move in a perfect circle. I can come right back here like this and have them disrupt my shoulder. What? You still have your, your tilt. You're talking about. But see, the tilt changes. Uh, paper? Who's got, who's got the paper? You guys have the paper? I got it. There you go. What? Right. It's more, Mark. Taylor, thanks a lot for everything. Do you need the carts to take back for the flight? Okay. Thanks, Herb. Do you want a bag of the shot to... Waste my nuts until once.
One to seven. Okay. One to seven on the dress, on bench 20 degrees. Uh-huh. Get it? So yeah. I'm going from the dress up, down, 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 trying to maintain the same angle. Right. But at and section, section eight, you go to zero. You go, it goes to zero. Watch, it coming out of it. It goes neutral. It's, it's neutral. And, and then, then you run, you have, after you turn. But After you hit it. Yeah. It happens very quickly. Now look at this. See this here? R means reverse. It actually goes back the other way. Okay. See, there's a second tilt here. It says this is axis tilt number two. One through five, there's no, no, no second tilt. But it's section six, the other second tilt. That's it. So you have one tilt going this way, going on. You're still in the first tilt. It's going on simultaneously. You know why you have to the second tilt? No. Because that's the only way you can get your shoulders to come around and move on a perfect circle. If, if I come up, if I go up, and I come right down, straight back on down like this, then I can't get my hands back down on the plane. Oh, I see, because you, you, you're moving forward now. Watch, here's a driver plane right here. Yeah. I've got a, if I sit up at a dress, here, the moment I come up, if I come right around the axle, my hands are up here like this. I've got to come right here like this. I've got to tilt back on down, my hands are there, and all I do is rotate around on this one. There's two yeah. tilts. Yeah, yeah Okay. Saying, sure. And the way you maintain your balance, so you don't disrupt your balance, as you come here like this every time, because I'm coming, if I go right around the center, do I just go like this? Now my, my, my I've come out of my waistband, do I move my head more this way now? And, and All sorts of things yeah. What? Yeah, everything else falls apart. Okay. So that's why the shoulders, now let's do the same thing with the straw again, left, left side. Okay, I go to the top, it goes, whoosh. Okay. And this way you can, if you look at, if you put a vertical line from outside of my head here, I've come to impact, I'm right here, I've already, I've already lost my waistband. I've lost the waistband, but my head, I'm not disrupting the balance center. I, I can go up, impact, rotate down the line right here, come right back, basically right back to the rest position and go forward. I see you. So Dave, come on, well, let's watch this one. So it moves going about two inches too much. Uh -huh. About that, okay? Okay. If that starts going that direction, now the next thing you go to the right hip. And you see what what is what is the right hip doing? Oh, it's moving back. What? It's not turning, it's yeah, moving it's just, back. See? Okay. Yeah, okay. And okay. Yeah. All right, now you go down to the next. So what I'm doing is I'm having the printer print some stuff up for me. So if I do an evaluation of a kid, or a right hip, right knee, it's actually check it off what it's doing, right? Now I want you to the right knee does. Okay. Did the right, did the right knee straight now? Did it kind of go up. back a little bit? What? Backs up and straightens up. A little bit, okay. Yeah. All right. All right, that's one thing. Now you go on the downswing, six, seven, eight, you find out what the left knee is doing, the follow swing is it straight now, is it bending? Okay. That's not too bad. No, it's good, but it's actually, it's, it's, it's Bending hyper and extending yeah. too, too much. It's kind of like snapping this way, okay? So if it was smoother to go straight, then that would pull this right foot off sooner. Yeah. In other words, yeah. I see the right foot staying back too long. And what you're, what you're, the, the snapping, he goes here and then snaps it, and then yeah, it what, pops off later. What, what is that? Usually the tendency is that if the right foot is staying down, that means the kid's right shoulder is going down vertical. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you see it in his, you know, his, his films. I mean, he gets up here and he goes past horizontal, right. considerable, and then it's straight down here. The club's still straight up here. Uh, okay. You know, it's just straight up here. We're gonna have him hit a couple more. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the films. Uh, okay, let's go from behind. Okay. First thing here again, first thing we'll do the left arm plan. So. Okay, where's the left arm? Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Right arm but, out. I couldn't see his left. The right arm was out here. Okay. Was the right arm. First thing, first thing, but where's the left arm? Oh, it's on the top. Okay. Top. Okay. Section four. Okay, that's the first thing. Okay. Two. 
That's not bad. What? That wasn't bad. I've heard of both. The last two are very good. Okay. Right on Smith is very good. Next, I know you already checked back on the right leg and see what's in the right leg is doing. Okay. Bend it down. Stay pretty good there. Okay. What? Under the cut. Uh, what section is from? Six, seven, eight. Because uh, the left side was like this. Uh, Piper is coming down. I don't think the whole thing is just kind of stepping in. Okay. The other thing is on this follow through, the left arm is too far. Huh. got to get up. Like the night of the race. This is parallel to that. Huh. Is it actually just letting go of it? What? Is it just letting go of it? No, it's just. It's, uh, his hands have a good trajectory moving around the axis. Joey Sindelar finishes, finishes very flat like that. Corey Fabian should finish it flat. There was an article by Bernhard Langer here who says, turning flat with the left elbow going around the rib cage. Yeah. And uh, it's just good, but then when you get a section eight to one of the nine, then it's got to come up a little higher. Okay? See how flat his shoulders are there? Uh -huh. Okay, but then, then it kind of brings it back a little bit. <laughs> I'm serious. Come on over here now. Let's uh, let's take this out in front. Turn this off. When the left arm moves in this plane around, it allows the right arm shoulder to kind of come up a little bit too high. So let's stand down, coming up here, then the arms separate. And so Kenny had a the kid has a problem with his right uh, left knee kind of moves a little bit this way and the right hip slide and going the back way. That tendency is exactly what you're doing. You're doing the same thing. Why was he doing it? Um, the right elbow gets out a little way, so he just comes back. Right. Rather, rather than coming right around section two of the screen. Because in section two, if you want a section two, the elbow should be moving in close to the side. The side, yeah. It looked like he had a little tendency to go a little, little bit that one, yeah, my like this, then the hips went, then when the elbow went around, then you stopped, then it went this way. Huh. It gets the right position. But, but it, it has a circuitous way of getting there. Yeah, yeah. Take, take this. Set up an address. Go to section two. May, try to have your right elbow get close to your side. Okay, then start over again. Yeah. Okay. And now, see, that should affect the feeling of you more, being more centered around. Right. right. Do it again. Keep turning. Go it up. All right. One more time. Farther away, right? Yeah, farther out. Take this. One more. Okay. Okay. Hold on just a second. Okay. It's the base now. It's still the body you get through some power.